That's pretty cool. An exciting discovery in the search for signs of past life on Mars. The Perseverance rover found organic chemicals sitting at the bottom of Jezero's crater. Those chemicals are made of carbon and hydrogen, two compounds needed to sustain life. It doesn't necessarily mean that there was once life on Mars, but it does indicate Mars potentially had the building blocks for life for much longer than we thought. Meanwhile, a big experiment is underway here on Earth. Four volunteers are living in a simulated Mars habitat. They are helping NASA figure out what it will take to send the first astronauts to Mars to live there in the future. And of course, who better to ask all of this uh, is former NASA astronaut himself, Mike Massimino. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Do you like the stars we've got I, here I love in your it. honor? It's a, that's our, a, our big, like, yes. A James Webb Telescope image and yeah. space and beyond. Man, this is just awesome. Thank you. We're going to get to the Mars probe okay. and the Mars habitat in just mm -hmm. a second, but I want to start with this fantastic new image that we just got yeah. from the James Webb tel Space Telescope. Mm -hmm. It's a nursery of baby stars in our cosmic backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, and before we launched the telescope, we only knew, like, what, of only a handful of these galaxies, right. and now we have hundreds of them? Yes, it's, it's shown us that there are many more of these star nurseries than we thought. This is the one that we've definitely found that's closest to us so far, about 390 um, million light, uh, 390 light years away. Not million, 390 light years away, Look so it's relatively that. It's spectacular. close. spectacular. Yeah, so this, what's cool about this is that we think that our solar system formed in a way similar to what we're seeing here. So this is a birthplace of stars and other cosmic material that could, we think, one day form a solar system like we have. So we're kind of looking at the way that perhaps our solar system was born with this beautiful image. It also shows the beauty of what's around us in the universe. Wow, it really does. All right, let's get to Mars rover. Mm -hmm. How big a deal is this to find these organic molecules? It's pretty huge uh, because looking at the building blocks for life as we know it, it would be things like these organic materials that looking at uh, carbon, hydrogen that they have discovered there. Uh, they're going to do a little more analysis. It's what, what they really would like to do is return these things to Earth. So part of that whole Mars rover project mm -hmm. is to do a sample return. So they're looking for good samples, and they have those picked out, these rocks that they want to get. How long will it take for, them to get them That's back. the thing. So it's going to be about 10 years before they could send, get the, the, the funding and the spacecraft together to get there. Mm -hmm. It's probably about maybe eight to 10 years oh we're looking boy. at. And then the, re the return back, though, is typically about a six-month journey. But okay. we're looking for a, a, a little while until they can, can actually get that, that, uh, the samples back. But it's great that they're able to, to study and find these things remotely with the rover. Okay, so I'm fascinated by this Mars habitat that NASA yeah. has set up in Texas. It's 1,700 mm -hmm. square feet. 4,000 people applied to be the, the volunteers. Yeah. They picked four, mm -hmm. and they're now in there. They've been yep. in there, like, what, about a couple of weeks, yeah. maybe? Not even. Yep. Uh, they're going to be in there for 378 days. They're going to yeah. try it. NASA says we're going to make this as hard on them and as Mars-like as possible. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, going to Mars is, we haven't done that yet with people, of course, right? So it's much different than what we've done before, uh, what, we're, what we're doing now. Space station, we have people in space for six months, sometimes longer, up to a year in a few cases. But you're still relatively close to the planet. So if you have an emergency, you can return people. Plus, the communication is fairly quick. It's a couple seconds. So if you have an issue, mm -hmm. Houston, we have a problem, about a second and a half, someone's going to say, uh, what is it? You know, how can we help? And on the moon, it's about a three seconds until someone responds. On Mars, you're going to say, Houston, we have a problem. About 30 to 40 minutes later, someone's going to say, what was that? Really? So you're really on your own. It's minutes. a long, because it's so far away. So it's not just the actual distance and the travel distance. They're going to be six months journey, about so a, a really year on Mars. So they really have to be self-sufficient. They have to be self-sufficient. And so that's what they're going to set up. The communications with their control room, when they have a problem, it's not going to be instantaneous. Okay. And also, they're going to be separated from their families. They're going to be in a small space for, for, with, for, with four people for uh, over a year. So it's not just the, working out the technical details, but also the psychological and the social details. How can we support people when we actually do go to Mars? Right. Not just technically, but also socially. NASA said they would include stressors for them, <laughs> yeah. uh, such as resource limitation, which yeah. means running out of supplies, That's right. isolation, equipment failure, mm -hmm. and significant workloads. It doesn't sound like it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to like no. dream up every potential problem they might have on Mars and make them go through it here on Earth. Yep, That's what they do. So the, the the training we've had when we've when I went to space with the space shuttle and what we do now with the space station that's pretty challenging. Lots of problems. They try to stress you out, but it's not over a year, and it's yeah. not staying in the simulator for for that long. So I think it's 
it's going to be a very interesting uh, experiment that they're doing, and they're going to learn a lot, and it'll be very helpful uh, when we actually do send people to Mars. Let's hope nobody, like, kills each other. No, I don't think... There's got to be some safeguards in there. I don't want to worry about that. There's got to be a panic button There's or gotta something. There's got to be some kind of backup for that. I'm sure yeah. they thought of that, where they're not going to let anything I'm, bad happen They actually anybody. probably did, because they have I'm to think sure of everything. I'm sure they did. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, and if it gets to that point, they'll, you know, they'll make sure that doesn't happen for real. Mike Massimino, always great to have you on set. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for having so me. Much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.